Arab Tov, Chavri, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Breaking news coming out of the Middle East there. There has been reports that both Russian and Syrian forces uh, have been killed in some of these latest clashes there that are going on over in Syria. But not only are we going to be discussing this here to, uh, this evening, but we're going to also be talking about Iran. Uh, we have uh, a new article that just came out. Uh, this came out only moments ago. In fact, let me run you over to Twitter here, see if I can pull this up real quick. This is a new article that just uh, surfaced on Twitter uh, just moments ago there. Maybe I can actually pick this thread up for you and share that with you guys. Uh, uh, I saw it uh, on Twitter and I pulled the article up, but I wanted to show this to you because of the time. Well, maybe the article itself. Let me look at the the article and see if we have a timestamp on here. Yes, four hours ago. We don't have to go to Twitter for that. This article came out four hours ago. Scoop, Israel passed White House intelligence on possible Iran plot. Now, I need you to really focus on this with me for a minute here. We have Prime Minister Netanyahu, John Bolton here, in this Axios.com uh, warning of a possible strike on the U.S. fleet there in uh, in and around uh, the, the Gulf there where our fleets are headed to. We got the aircraft carrier sent to the Middle East after indications Iran planned attack on U.S. forces is what they're saying there. Now, uh, here's what's really weird about this. Now, this their, their article comes out today as well, but I got an email from my own source uh, from Iran last night and uh, I have to kind of hide the information of who this is from I don't know if I can get this to blow up any bigger for you um, I'm hoping you guys can see this okay well wait a minute here we go maybe, maybe uh, magnifying glass nope I can't do it that way ah geez let me just see I'm trying to find a way guys to make this larger for you um, Ah, I'll just, let me just read it to you. It says here, Hi Stephen, I got info that some members of the Iranian opposition group who have been very close to John Bolton, People's Mayadeen of Iran, were arrested while trying to purchase speedboats similar to the ones uh, the Iranian, Iranian Revolutionary Guard uh, uses in the Persian Gulf. Apparently a false flag operation was underway but not by Americans, but by this guys who tried to disturb, well, S-H-I-T, and hoped that it would hit the fan. Apparently, the co uh, coordinations between the U.S. and Iranian Navy is still ongoing in the Gulf to avoid any mishap. Iranian Army is on the highest alert. Nobody takes a day off for the time being. They sell over a million barrels a day. Speaking about a million barrels of oil a day. But... What the good friend that I have there that is saying here, and this, if you look at the timestamp, this came to me at 2.16 a.m. 13 hours ago when I actually photographed this particular uh, article here, which was a little bit earlier as well. So it's 2.16 a.m. in the morning uh, on, of course, today, May the 6th. I got that letter there. Uh, I'd got a message, a warning to let me know that the letter was coming. It was information that was uh, important. And of course it is. Because here we have, at uh, this one here is May 6, 3.46 p.m. Aircraft carrier sent to the Middle East after indications Iran planned attack on U.S. forces. All right. So almost 12 hours before ABC News is reporting this. And of course before Exos... They only reported this four hours ago. So again, uh, geez, <laughs> what, about 16 hours before they're bringing this out. And they're all telling you that the Iranians are planning an attack on U.S. assets coming there to the Persian Gulf. What a bunch of nonsense. This, the very guilty man is right there, John Bolton, working with his little crux of criminals there. Let me see if there's any way. I mean, we got to find a way to make this get a little bigger here or something. Let me just see if I can do something with this. See, no, I have no way to do it there. I really wished I could, but I don't. Uh, 
Ah, nope. There's just no way of doing it. Let's see. Well, it's just not going to happen, so I apologize for that. All I did was mess up the letter for you even worse. But anyway, I got info that some members of the Iranian opposition group who have very close, uh, very close to John Bolton, and uh, well, well, maybe we can move this thing. Let's see here. Well, it does. It blows. It only kind of points it out. Very close to John Bolton. Uh, People's Mayadeen of Iran were arrested while trying to purchase speedboats similar to the ones the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, and I don't know what the C stands for, uses in the Persian Gulf. So this is what we got. John Bolton's little thugs were planning a plot to attack our U.S. military Using these little loyalists of these, uh, these little Iranian loyalists to the United States, they're going to use them to attack us with John, Bo John Bolton's friends. What kind of friends do you have, John Bolton? I mean, this is absolutely absurd. So, there's the truth of this. This is all fabricated nonsense garbage being pumped to the American people. What are we going to get next, right? What's going to come next? Anyway, I got a scripture up there, but I'm going to go to that a little bit later. So the thing is that we've been getting these messages here for about the last three or four hours about uh, possible Russian and Syrian forces. There's a place called uh, uh, Yanabra in uh, Syria near the Hama area. This is where all this heavy fighting is going on. And when they were coming across, I think, a little bridge or something like that, they were sustaining a very heavy attack. Uh, in, a, uh, in a repel against the Syrian and Russian forces. Russia has denied uh, that they have lost any of their forces there. There is claims, though, that they took out one of the Russian leaders. Uh, even though he was an Arabic man, they took him out. Uh, also, the protection YPG militia commit horrific massacre of a family in Deir el Zor. You have to remember down there, you know, of course, the YPG being supported by the U.S., and uh, says the supported by the U.S.-led International Coalition aircraft carried out a horrific massacre of a whole family in, in Daman village in the eastern suburb of Deir Azor province in East Syria. We've been telling you guys about what's going on over there. It's terrible. The U.S. is just galvanizing and, and, and just plowing through southern Syria, making way for their pipeline to run it right into Haifa. Now, this, is, this is despicable. Here's another one of these clashes here. Tel, Tel Othman, which is, uh, let me give you the map here so you kind of get a better idea. This is Hama right there, and to the west, actually it's supposed to be more northwest, but to, to the west there, where that battle is raging on. If you look at the live view map, you can see the same thing. It looks like uh, they got bombs dropping there. We got a lot of fighting up here near the Idlib province there. A lot of work is going on there where Russia and Syria is trying to secure these towns where they still have those embedded forces around there. So it is a major battle going on. Also, at the same time, the Russian air base, the Khamimi air base, was shelled by dozens of rockets attacks. They were repelled, according to the, uh, the MOD of Russia. Syrian militants, militants fired 36 rockets at the Russian Khamimi air base in two attacks on Monday, but both were repelled by the air defenses with no damage dealt, the Russian military said, adding that jets launched strikes in response. The shelling came from Idlib de-escalation zone controlled by the Hayat Tahrir al-Sham terrorist group formerly known as al-Nusra Front, the head of the Russian Center of Reconciliation in Syria, Major General Viktor uh, Kup Kupashisin, sorry about that, Victor. I cannot get that last name. Anyway, uh, this is what's happened. The militants used a drone to direct the fire from multiple launch rocket systems, but the attacks were repelled by Khamimi's air defense system. Uh, now that big old S-300 and S-400 system is kicking into gear when Russia's got to make sure they protect themselves. Can't say as a blame them, but you know, hey, facts are just the facts, right? Let, let me tell you something. This is something I wanted to share with you. We had a brother, and I, and I really meant to get his name. Maybe it was a sister. I don't want to make that wrong. Sent uh, to us just the other day and said to me, really, I should go back and look at Amos chapter 6 in light of the things that are happening there in the Middle East. And I did. Uh, and I want to thank whoever it was that sent that. My wife handed this over to me, and it's my fault for not getting back with her to get the name on the person. But anyway, 
Let me show something to you, though, that I saw in this, uh, this scripture here. She told me about it. I didn't actually get a chance to read the, uh, the, the correspondence on this, but I did pull the scripture up. It says, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion, to them that are secure in the mountain of Samaria, the notable men of the first of the nations, to whom the house of Israel come. Pass you into Kalni uh, and see, and from thence go to Hamath and the great, then go down to Gath of the Philistines. Are they better than these kingdoms? Or are these borders border greater than your border? Yea, they put far away the evil day and cause the seed of violence to come near. They lie upon beds of ivory and stretch themselves upon their couches and eat the lambs out of the flock and the calves out of the midst of the stall that thrum on the psaltery, that devise themselves instruments of music like David, that drink wine and bowls, anoint themselves with the cheap ointments, but they are not grieved for the hurt of Joseph. Notice that. They're not grieved for the hurt of Joseph right there. Al Shavad Yosef. Do you realize that's speaking about Jesus Christ? Yeshua? See, Joseph in every aspect is a type of Christ. Watch what else it says, though. Now, that is telling you, because he's going to talk about they're going to go into exile. He's talking about the house of Judah. Therefore, now shall they go captive at the head of them that go captive. And the revelry of them that stretch themselves shall pass away. The Lord God has sworn by himself, saith the Lord, the God of hosts, I abhor the pride of Jacob and hate his palaces. I will deliver up the city with all that is therein. Why? Because they did not grieve for the hurt of Joseph. Now, we know that's not talking about the natural Jacob. He loved his son and grieved like crazy for him. But Israel did not. And it shall come to pass that there remain ten men in a house that they shall die. Do you realize the implications of that verse right there in verse 9 of, of Amos chapter 6? Not only can that deal with 70 AD, but it could even deal with today. Do you know what it means? And it shall come to pass and there, if there remain ten men in one house that they shall die. You see, Israel believes as long as there are ten righteous praying at the synagogue there at the Wailing Wall in the Kotel, the, the Kotel Synagogue, as long as there's ten righteous praying, that God will spare Jerusalem. And God's letting you know right here, it shall come to pass if there remain ten men in one house, that they shall die. God isn't finding the deeds that are being done, neither in seven, uh, back in 70 AD, neither today does he find them righteous anymore before him. And when a man's uncle shall take him up, even he that burneth him to bring out the bones out of the house, and shall say unto him that it is the innermost parts of the house, is there yet any with thee? And he shall say no. Then shall he say, hold thy peace, for we must not make mention of the name of the Lord. Again, reverts back to what happened in 70 A.D. You know why they stopped pronouncing the name of the Lord, the divine name of God? Because when Yeshua come, he provoked them to jealousy. I've actually got it here in the Hebrew Matthew, and I, need to, I meant to pull it up for you, and I forgot to. But in here, in this book right here, it talks about how Yeshua used the divine name and that's how he raised the dead, healed the sick. He taught his apostles how to pronounce it as well. That's what provokes Israel to jealousy. So they took and they said, For we must not make mention of the name of the Lord. They had lost the ability to say it in the first place. And I think even today it's no different than it was 2,000 years ago, they've also, they are not grieved for the hurt of Joseph. Today, the rabbinical community around the world, 
They don't care about Yeshua. They're more busy trying to pass seven Noahide laws for us to have to keep. I think we need to think about these things, friends. Because we're living in a very serious hour. And few people are willing to take up the fight and fight the good fight of faith. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Consider your support for this broadcast because there's not many that want to support truth. We need your help. Visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can give there either online or via mail. We thank you and thank you for your kindness and love. Sure.